or welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kayla and I am a graduate student in a clinical mental health counseling program and I also am a full-time caseworker for Adult Protective Services. So, today's vlog is going to be the day in the life of a caseworker. So, I'm going to take you guys with me along for my day. I'm not going to be able to show you guys everything just because there are some confidentiality issues and all of that but I am going to try to show you guys as much as I can right now it is 6:53. I have to be at work at 7:30 this morning normally I don't have to be at work until 8 30 um, but on Thursdays I leave an hour early so that I could go to therapy and I have to cop my time so that is why I am going to work at 7.30 this morning. So we're gonna get a ton of work done. I will try to vlog on my camera as much as I can. A lot of the clips may be filmed on my phone just because we moved to a different office and our desks are smaller. And it'll be a whole lot easier to record on my phone than my camera because I already don't have a lot of space as it is. So we're about to head to Dunkin Donuts right now and get some coffee and then we're going to head into work. I get off of work at the same time at 4.30. Um, so yeah, it is raining, it is gloomy and disgusting outside. So I'm not a fan. So we're going to head to Dunkin and get some coffee um, and then we're going to go into work. So I will talk to you guys probably when I am in the Dunkin Donuts drive through Hi, can I have a large butter pecan iced coffee with cream and liquid sugar? Okay. Um, and then can I have two extra pumps of the butter pecan swirl? Got it, Anadia. And then just a vanilla long john. Okay. And that'll be it. Thank you, girl. Thank you.
next day. I was getting ready to start the weekend vlog when I realized I never really explained what Adult Protective Services is. And then I was looking on, um, at the comments on my last video and someone asked, how did I get this job? Because she wants to work with the elderly. So I'm going to explain all of that. So first of all, what is Adult Protective Services? So we investigate abuse, neglect, exploitation, and self-neglect. Self of adults who are 60 and over and then 18 through 59 with a qualifying disability so we have a 30-day investigation period and then we determine if the abuse happened or not and then we send out referrals um so that's pretty much like what we do generally i think a lot of people think we have a lot more power than we do i would also like to say that each state is different in terms of what their program looks like and the type of cases that they handle. Like some states, when an older adult is getting scammed, um, like credit card scam and check scams and all of that, they deal with that. The state of Illinois, we do not deal with uh, scams. So that goes to the attorney general. So, um, but like I was saying, a lot of people think we have a lot more power than we actually do. So we cannot force um, an adult to like leave their home. So if they are like an able body adult, like if they have capacity, if there's nothing um, going on with like their cognitive abilities, there's no cognitive impairments. If they decide they want to live in a home where there's physical abuse, we have to respect their rights. We are a client driven program, unless of course, there are cognitive impairments there but um if we start okay i'm back if we start to notice um that there are cognitive impairments there's a guardianship option where the state goes for guardianship and then we can take the person out the home but that is like the last the last resort um so for example if the um older adult needs a caregiver we would put in referral for that or if they need meals on wheels we'll put in referral for that if they need their house clean railings install things like that we will put in those referrals so that's pretty much the gist of what my job is so in my state you need a bachelor's degree in a social science to get the job so um a few of my co-workers have master's degrees if you want a manager position or supervisor position you have to have a master's degree or at least working on it but for the most part you have to have a bachelor's degree um, here in Illinois, you, um, our Adult Protective Services, or APS, goes by county. So, I don't know how it is in other states, but if you are interested in the job, um, I guess you would try looking it up by county first. Again, I don't know how different states operate. Um, but, yeah, I would try seeing, um, looking it up by county. So, looking up Adult Protective Services um in whatever county that you live in and see what comes up you may even just type in adult protective services and then your state's website pops up because we are through the illinois department on aging so you may be through the michigan department on aging or whatever it's called so that's definitely a way i would check that out um and then yeah we don't transfer cases across state lines so um if my client was to up and move to iowa tomorrow instead of transferring the case to iowa we would just close the case because again programs are different across states so it's a little harder to transfer cases across state lines just because our programs are different and we are also a client driven program so we still have to do the 30-day investigation period and all of that request bank records medical records whatever whatever police records but at the end if the um adult has the capacity to do so they can decline our services they can honestly decline our services before the 30-day investigation period is over because pre-covid we would do face-to-face -face visits um and we are actually going back out into the field next week the state has given us to go to go back out in the field but we will be wearing ppe so um like i said we would go normally to the person's house to try to talk about the allegations and then we would try to get consent to talk to the aa or the alleged abuser if they say no you can't talk to them if they don't have the capacity to make that decision then we proceed in cbi or client's best interest meaning we get to talk to whoever is going to benefit the client 
So um, that would be social workers at the hospital, um, daughters, sons, aunties, uncles, mothers, fathers, friends, neighbors, whoever. If they have capacity and then they decline consent, we can't speak to those people. And at the end of the 30 day investigation period, if it gets that far, um, the client can decline services and then we close the case. The client can decline you at the door. If they slam the door in your face, say F off, whatever, that's really what you have to do. Like you can't, you know, try to force your way in. You can't force them to talk about anything. If you can't get in contact with your client, there's a few steps that we take. Like we, um, now we make a phone call. We make two phone calls. We'll send a letter. And then after that, we'll conduct a well-being check through the police. For face-to-face -face visits, I think it's going to be more so <clears throat> we do the two face-to-face -face visits and then um, we send a letter and then we call the well-being check. Sometimes if you know you have aggressive alleged abusers, you will get accompanied by the police department. Um, they are well known with our program here in our county and they're very helpful for the most part. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what Adult Protective Services is. So if you're interested in the caseworker job, I would definitely try looking up APS in your state um, and seeing what you can find. And then they probably break them down by counties because that's kind of how Illinois is. Um, and then go from there. So yeah, I... I like the job. It's not hard. It's very draining. Normally when I get home from work, I try to meditate or something for 15 to 30 minutes to kind of de-stress and get myself out of the caseworker abuse role because you see some terrible things, you hear some terrible things, and it kind of makes you look at human beings a different way because you're like, how can you do that to someone who is 85 years old and who has end-stage dem end dementia like it kind of makes you look at people a different way, but it is a rewarding job when you get to help people and you really get to get them the services in the home that they really need. So it's a rewarding job in that aspect. So if that is a job that you're interested for, make sure you develop good self-care tactics and techniques and things because you will definitely need them. The job can and will stress you out. So I don't think I got a lot of clips just because yesterday wasn't a busy day. It was actually very quiet, which I'm really surprised. Fridays are typically like a very busy day. A lot of people are trying to call in reports. So hopefully I got enough clips to kind of show you guys literally all the job is right now because we're not going out in the field is phone calls and case noting. If you didn't case note it, it didn't happen. So, um when we get back into the field things will be a little bit different because we'll be driving around to different clients homes and um doing how our program was originally meant to do but pre i mean but now that you know we're dealing with covid we um are doing everything telephonically and we have been for the past couple of months which is why you guys just see me making phone calls and doing case notes and things like that so um, if you guys have any other questions, make sure you leave them down in the comments. I'm going to go ahead and end this vlog so that I can get it edited and uploaded in a couple of hours. And yeah, I will talk to you guys um, actually in my weekend vlog. <laughs>